So we are going to discuss again today, still in the introduction of Bhagavad Gita. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Hare. Ram <laughs> we was discussing also about well about we arrived at this stage the explanation of that. the five basic in the domain.
So we're coming to this problem. Okay, we, we arrived at this, this part of the <clears throat> So the complete whole sonality of Godhead has human potencies. Parasha Shakir will be tied in Sriyaka. So there are four elements, 24 elements of, uh, according to Sankhya philosophy, we have 24 elements. And uh, that is, is called temporary manifestation according to Shankar. So as Lopagot mentioned here, there is nothing extraneous, nor there is anything needed. This manifestation has its own, own time fixed by the energy of the Supreme Home. When its time is complete, this temporary manifestation Manifestation will be an annihilated by the complete arrangements of comfort. There is complete facility for the small complete units, namely the living entities, to realize the complete. And all sorts of incompleteness are experienced due to incomplete knowledge of the, of the complete. So Bhagavad Gita contains the complete knowledge of Vedic wisdom. So mention that we are microcosmos. So there is our macrocosmos and microcosmos. So macrocosmos means the universe, this big universe. And we are microcosmos, we are Actually, smaller unit, actually, smaller complete. It's mentioned here. We are smaller <coughs> complete unit, a small complete unit, namely living entities. So we are called as microcosmos, microcosmos. Because what? Uh, why? Because our body. And everything else, everything else is consists of 24 elements. Our Jesus, Sankhya philosophy, and also there is soul over there, which is 25th. 25th things. And then still also inside there is Paramatma, as you can see. But all this, but uh, Atma, Arjiva, and Paramatma is something different, something not material. So we are called as a small complete unit, if you have ever heard of the microcosmos. And then, continuing again, all Vedic knowledge is infallible. Hindu accept Vedic knowledge to be complete and infallible. For example, here is about Kaudang. And according to scripture, the cow dung is actually pure. The cow dung is pure. So it is used, the cow dung is used in many ways to clean utensils. Yeah. And even in order to clean our body, we, we can use the cow dung. This Laprabhat here giving an example. If one touches the stool of an animal, he has to take bath and to purify himself. Also, if we just going, if we going to the going to the toilet, for example, if we uh, passing stool, according to Vedic standard, is that we have to take 
after fasting still we have to take bath. So it is like um, cleanliness, cleanliness standard of wedding. So when we going to passing still, we have to take bath. And also the the cloth or the dress we are not supposed to wearing like whatever going to the toilet actually when we're passing through everything is, is contaminated so we have to take a full full bath actually we have to take full bath especially one yeah, this is like cleanliness in western country nobody know about this they don't even take part properly and for Vedic standard according to our Vedic standard when we pass in school we have to take part otherwise it's contaminated we have to take full part this is a Vedic standard of cleanliness but for the physical cleanliness and also here is a mention that uh, the point the Prabhupada bringing here is that if one touch the passing a touch of the stool of the animal we have to purify ourselves to take part by taking that at the same time in the Vedic scripture mentioned, Kaudang is considered to be purifying agent. So, it seems look like contradictory. But actually it's not. Why? <clears throat> After some time, actually, many scientists also know that the Kaudang is pure. And it's already given in the scripture, in the way that the Kaudang is pure. Even for sacrifice, fire sacrifice, also, we, we need the dried cow dung. And you know, in India, also people making it a, a cow dung cake and then put in in the wall or in the trees like that and keep it to dry. And then also use for, for cooking. Or in another place, because in the traditional village, the floor, the floor is only like earth leaf floor is 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 not the cement or ceramic or marbles like that. So the villager usually will clean will clean the the floor using the the water that water of cow dung like that is considered to be clean. Also, if before we performing yagya, the area will be cleaned by using cow dung water. Also. And here, Sabha mentioned mentioned that the Vedic knowledge is complete because it is above all doubt and mistakes. And Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. The essence. Bhagavad Gita is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. So, in modern days, this is almost impossible for for everybody to learn the whole Veda. Veda is very big literature. Vedic scripture is very fast. So. There is a Chaturveda Samhita, and there is again Chaturveda Samhita, Mindrik Veda, Yajur Veda, Samaveda, Atharva Veda. It's already a lot. And then there is Vedanga. Vedanga means the limbs of Veda. What is that? There are six limbs of, of uh, how to study Veda. There are Vyakarana, 
it's like a grammar for Sans Sanskrit grammar. In order to study Veda, we have to know Sanskrit and the rest grammar. Like that. And then Jyotisha, I mean astrolo astrology. And then Chanda, I mean we have to know how to pronounce the mat matri matter, like a metrical signs and then there's another thing that is sick, sick actually so in order to study the way that we need all those things but actually now Sula Prabhupada have bring this Bhagavad Gita I said this and for us we can understand from his explanation of Bhagavad Gita so it is not that we can to understand the Vedic knowledge we should uh, studying from the proper source. Why? Otherwise we will not get um, the real meaning of what is Bhagavad Gita actually as it is. What is Bhagavad Gita? What is the even if we are not studying from proper source so we will be misguided it means that the conclusion will be not the same also the goal for example the many people they commenting Bhagavad Gita that they're saying that they delete Krishna from there delete mean uh, Krishna is considered as according to Arjuna and others other saintly person is accepted as supreme sanity of Godhead and many commentators they delete Krishna from his position as the supreme personality of Godhead so that's why even the study Vedic literatures we should be careful that we have to find the proper from authoritative why authoritative Unless it is authoritative, we will not get the same message. So, Sabrabad here mentioned, <clears throat> we have to receive knowledge from the proper source in disciple succession, beginning with the Supreme Spiritual Master of Lord Himself. Yeah. Here. The disciple succession means the change of spiritual master and there is and the disciple I mean teacher and student and again from that student it will be given to his student again and then to his student to his student like that that is called succession disciple succession means like that from um, teacher to the student then from that person again to his student and then to the student like that And actually start from Lord Himself. And it handed down to a succession of spiritual master. Yeah. And a student at, of Bhagavad Gita is actually Arjuna at first, given by Lord Krishna as spiritual master. And Arjuna was accepting whatever Krishna said is as correct in Bhagavad Gita. It is not that we take something, one portion of Bhagavad Gita, and just discard another. It's not like that. Sometimes people they like that. they're studying. Oh, I would like to take some part of Bhagavad Gita, and then disregarding other other part of Bhagavad Gita, because that tendency is that they would like want to choose something pleasing for them. And they're neglecting others. It's not supposed to be like that. That is whimsical. Yeah. Without interpreting. Sorry. <clears throat> we must accept our Gita without interpretation, without deletion. Yeah. Without interpretation means. We are speculating, and without deletion, mean we have to uh, accept everything 
and without our own whimsical participation, participation in the matter. So, the Gita should be taken as the most perfect presentation of Vedic knowledge. Because Vedic knowledge is coming from transcendental sources, which is actually coming from Lord Krishna himself. And then the word coming from, from the Lord is called Aupaurusheya, meaning that they are different from words spoken by a person of mundane world who is infected with power defect. Yeah, okay, here this is, here. It's explained about four defects for the person of this material world. But Krishna, the Supreme Sanity of Godhead, is not affected by this defect. So what, what this defect is, what this defect are, one is sure to commit mistake. Yeah, we are all, um, all, all being, always making mistakes. For example, in math, we usually there is a lot of formula, and then when we wanted to solve the problem, sometimes a, lo a lot of mistake on our from one part to another part. And then this is all that we're making mistakes. And then invariably illusion. Yeah, we are illusion. Thinking something which is not as a truth. We are illusion. And then we have tendency to cheat. To cheat, to cheat others has tendency to cheat others. And then it's limited by imperfect senses. Yeah, our senses is imperfect. Like I was mentioning that when we go, go to the desert, that actually we will see something like a water, but there is no water over there. Or when we see also in the in the road, when there is this very hot, we see also that there is water there, but actually there is no water over there. This we are illusion. Or, or, or another example is that we see the sun is fair as a very small ball of fire. But actually, the sun is very big. So, we are also imperfect senses. And also, another very easy example is that on the dark, dark room, actually, when we come inside the dark room, totally there is no light. When totally there is no light, we cannot even see ourselves. And also, actually, in that room, there is a lot of things. There is cushion, there is table, there is uh, many things inside. But because there is no light, we cannot see anything over there. And then, if we if we conclude that there is the room is empty, then we are making mistakes. We are making a mistake. We say, oh, there is, there is nothing in the room. But actually, because there is no light, we cannot see anything over there. So our con conclusion, by using our uh, imperfect senses, is, is not correct. It's, it's a wrong conclusion. So we as a human being having this for imperfection and then we cannot manufacture manufacture about, uh, the knowledge of spirituality should be coming from personality who is not affected by this who is actually Lord himself and then if we if we keep 
this knowledge, the orig original knowledge from, from Krishna himself, without changing anything. Because it is coming from Krishna who is apaurusaya, he is not a person who having this defect. So our our knowledge also perfect. Yeah, because it's coming from Krishna himself. And then given to Arjuna. And then it's coming down from the separate succession. Except from the authoritative source, then they will get the same message from Lord Krishna, actually. That's why Sula Prabhupada is very merciful of bringing this uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is to the speaking, English speaking country. <clears throat> So this is the way how not Vedic knowledge is being imparted. Vedic knowledge is, impart, is not imparted by such defective living entities. It was imparted first into the heart of Brahma, the first created living being. It is mentioned in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter one, first chapter also, first chapter, text one is mentioned. Tene Brahma, Adi Kawayo. So, the first created living being is Brahma. After receiving from, after the knowledge is imparted into the heart of Brahma, then Lord Brahma gives or disseminate this knowledge to his sons and disciples. And then again, being handed down they handed down to his disciple and his sons. And Sala Prabhupada mentioned here that, that the Lord is Purnam. Purnam means perfect. All perfect. Here in this world, Purnam is perfect. And there is no possibility of his becoming subjected to the laws of natural nature. Yeah, okay, That's, we can make it big like this. So, So I lost the track, wait. No, let me come this one. We already, this one, we already covered this. Actually, we were still in the beginning of this night.
I think we covered this one. <clears throat> This is so far. Sorry. So here coming to this. Accelerated knowledge is not question of a research. Mm. So also here, accelerated knowledge is complete because it's above all doubts and mistakes. This one we already covered it, and then here we are here, right? All perfect. The purnam, the Lord is purnam, and then means. That is all perfect. So, <clears throat> also we know that actually the Lord is only proprietor of everything in this universe. Then he is the original creator, uh, the creator of Brahma. So, and common people, they are informed that actually Lord Brahma is a creator. This is correct because Lord Brahma also created, but actually is the secondary creator. The ingredients have actually have been created by Lord, Lord Vishnu before Lord Brahma creating. Actually all the ingredient is already given by Lord Vishnu. And in anyhow, because Lord Brahma is power of creation of Lord Brahma is actually also given by by Lord Krishna or Lord Krishna and uh, Lord Brahma also called as uh, Pitamaha Pitamaha and it's like a grandfather but Lord Krishna is called as Prapitamaha even before Lord Brahma he is Prapitamaha yeah. So it means that Lord Krishna is actually is actually there even before the Pitamaha or before Lord Brahma and he's actually the creator of Lord Brahma. So actually there is in um, people in general understanding about the positions of Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Shiva is, is not correct. There are many examples given of how we are utilizing those things which are set aside for us by the Lord. This is also explained in Bhagavad Gita. That Arjuna actually first don't want to fight after saying that his relative, his guru, his like family member is actually there, everything. And he because of his devotee, so is naturally soft hearted, compassionate. Yeah. 
but actually it is his duty as a satria to fight in the principle of dharma yeah. he was so compassion but it is material compassion but actually his higher higher duty is to perform to perform his task as a satria to fight to to establish the dharma or the justice actually yeah in in the before war he saw that there is a brother in law brothers nephews and everybody teacher grandfathers and so on so actually by saying that i don't want to fight arjuna said i don't want to fight actually he is want to satisfy his bodily demands miss material compassion and then bhagavad gita is spoken by lord krishna to change arjuna so that he understand his duty and then arjuna said at, at the last after hearing bhagavad gita he said karishye vachanam tava i shall act according to your word so that is arjuna's how finally he accept whatever that krishna said to him i did he he make a decision that he will fight perform his duty for satisfaction of krishna because he is kshatriya is a administrator plus warrior like if even in ordinary common nation also there is a section of society is, is to be a warrior to be a army so for them it's natural to fight yeah. to make the nation secure also the same way arjuna is a warrior so it is his duty to to fight for to establish the the law or the order of the lord and slavrapad giving here the next one is mentioning about we are not supposed to be quarreling like cats and dogs we are not <laughs> quarreling for quarreling like cats and dogs and what is our our uh, important thing when we are coming to this human being is that we have to go for higher go for higher higher purpose with the self realization so shla prabhupad mentioned here that bhagavad gita or vedic literature is meant for human being not for animals animal can kill other living entities there is no question of sin on their part but if man kill an animal for the satisfaction of of his uncontrolled taste he must be responsible for breaking the laws of nature shla yeah. prabhupad giving this point that we we don't need to kill animals for our satisfaction of the tongue we will be responsible because the law of karma is done. for example a killing especially cows is very sinful like this why because cows is like our mother cow is like our mother not because of sentimental but actually is like in ancient time not in ancient time even in modern days in india cow cow gives milk and is that's why he is considered as our mother 
cows give milk and he is, is like our mother. So when we kill our, our own mother, so there will be very big sins. Also for other animals, it's big sins. Usually people, because they like the taste of the meat, so they don't, they are not able to give it up because they like the taste of meat. All of this clearly described, and if we properly utilize the section about Gita, then our whole life will become purified. And then in this next paragraph, Sula Prabhupada is uh, talking about this, uh, this I, uh, destination. It is called Sanatan Sky, Eternal Spiritual Sky, Yad Gatwa Nani Vartanta. So actually when we achieve perfection, when we go back home to Godhead, then yet gatwa nani vartante. When we achieve that, we will never back again to this uh, material world. Mr. Prabhupada uh, mentioning about the our manifestation of our body it come into being. That everything in this material world is temporary. It's come into being, stay for some time, produce some byproduct, dwindles and then vanishes. Like our body also, we can see that it comes to manifestation, coming, coming from when we first come into the womb of, of mother, it's very small cells and then become morula and then big become big a lot like that and then growing become a baby so it comes into being and we take we was born and then stay for some time we are in the in the childhood and then uh, produce some byproduct when we grown up and then make a family and we also have a child and then after some time we are getting old and then it's called dwindles and then after some time this body will confess this is the temporary body i mean this our material body is temporary so have that that uh, characteristic So it is also happening, as some of the would mention, that fruit also we can see is coming from the, the flower blooming and then after blooming it dwindles and after some time it's become like a fruit, small coming from small and then grow bigger, 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 bigger and then mature. And after mature, from that point, will be dwindles and then decaying or either it is fall apart into the earth like that. But actually, yeah, even actually many things also come, for example, even the mountain, for example. It was very nice in ancient time. Nobody destroying the hill. But somehow in modern days, many, even the hill being crushed, they want to take the, the stone of it to make big, big hotel, to make different construction in the city. It's doing that and disappear after some time. But Actually, Mr. Prabhupada wants to mention about 
there is another another spiritual sky which is not having the same characteristic character characteristic like this uh, temporary world which is called the supreme abode of, of the lord And Shla Prabhupada mentioned here as Sanatan. Sanatan, the eternal. The Lord is described also Sanatan. Sanatan means eternal. Never change. The Lord is also Sanatan. We are also Sanatan. And the whole purpose of Bhagavad Gita is to revive our Sanatan occupation. With this Sanatan Dharma. So sometimes... We are, when people call us Hindu, actually, as I mentioned in another part of our discussion, that Hindu is just a word. It's a word given from foreign, but it's from Persian people calling people in the Sindhu river, Indus river. But actually, we are following Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma means eternal occupation of the living entity. We never change. Maybe they call us Hindu, but that is only the name. But actually, Sanatan Dharma is something never changed. Either in the next life, previous life, or this life, is never changed, actually. Religion is something. If the word religion in modern days is more or less it's like a faith that they can change for any reason. For example, somebody from Christian becoming Muslim or Muslim become Christian or Muslim become Hindu or Hindu become Muslim. It's just based on faith, actually. Just based on faith. And faith can change anytime. But the real religion or dharma or sanatan dharma never changes. Either we are in Muslim or we are in Hindu or we are in Christian. There is something eternal that never changes. And religion, the real religion or dharma, sanatan dharma cannot be changed actually. What is that? It is we are eternal servant of God. So there is this never change. And Shla Prabhupada mentioned here how is pure life is by purifying and give up all these temporary activities and take up the activities which are prescribed by the Supreme Lord that is pure life. Okay, I will stop here from today. I will try to cover the next part tomorrow. And we'll see you tomorrow. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Adhita Gita Dara Sri Gita Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jai Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai Hare Krishna